Hey guys, welcome back. It's Matthew with another episode of Wadi's channel. Uh, today's episode is actually one I've been wanting to make for probably a few weeks now. Uh, as of about a week or so ago, I finally got the last piece in, so I'm finally able to do the complete set. And of course, it is the uh, Tales from the Crypt Keeper uh, figures. Now, these figures actually were made from uh, a small company, uh, Ace Novelty. Uh, from what I could find online, it uh, looks like they didn't really make anything uh, prior to these figures. And sadly, never made anything uh, post uh, Tales from the Crypt either. So, I went back and I kind of watched the uh, Tales from the Crypt Keeper series. Um, not a lot of episodes, just a few of them. So, a lot of these characters uh, do actually appear in the pilot episode of uh, Tales from the Crypt Keeper. And uh, I don't, from what I've seen, I haven't really seen any episodes where uh, they kind of portrayed any of these figures or any of these characters uh, at a later date. Uh, so these are kind of like your, you know, your star monsters from, you know, early 20th century. Obviously, they had to change things up a little bit. You know, you couldn't mimic the monsters, uh, you know, exactly, you know, copyright infringement and all that. So uh, I, I don't expect this to be a, a very long video, maybe 15, 20 minutes. I could probably get it done in less than 10, but I mean, I like to talk every now and then. So uh, now there are some things, obviously, I do want to add uh, to the channel, uh, some ideas that I've been floating around my head. Uh, I'll probably be discussing that more towards the end of this video, but anyone that really clicked on this video are interested in, in seeing the collection. So uh, before I go into any of that, any of those details, I will kind of pause for a moment and uh, dive right in. So, uh, again, uh, Tales from the Crypt Keeper, anyone that watched Tales from the Crypt, they know the story, uh, ran for roughly seven seasons, 1989-1990 uh, season, up until about 96-97, HBO series, you know, fantastic. Um, as far as the horror genre goes, uh, the Crypt Keeper himself, uh, voiced by uh, John Kassir, he's not exactly, you know, he, he's a narrator, he, he's not a slasher. But at the same time, you do kind of throw him in the same uh, same group as Jason and, and Freddy and Michael and, and so on. You know, Crypt Keeper, again, one of the most iconic uh, characters in the horror genre. Uh, definitely one of my favorites. And uh, so in the early 90s, early mid-90s, they came out with the Tales from the Crypt Keeper series. I believe it ran for three seasons, if I'm not mistaken. I only became familiar with the series maybe a few years ago. And maybe it's because I'm an adult and maybe I would have enjoyed it a lot more had I actually seen it as a kid. Now, again, I could be three years old. I could be 10 years old. It don't matter. I grew up watching slasher movies and, and horror films and, and shows. So I, I was always very familiar with the Tales from the Crypt series. You know, I used to watch that every week uh, as a kid myself. Um, I, I never knew about the Tales from the Crypt Keeper series as a kid. But I think they moved it to ABC, uh, made it more family friendly, uh, made it more of a child show. You know, um, kind of has like those you know feel good moments at the end. You know, uh, fable type of stuff where you learn your lessons and whatnot. So not the you know, <laughs> not the crazy horror that you expect with with the uh, sad endings or what have you. So, again, uh, Tales from the Crypt Keeper, they came out with eight figures. Uh, they all appeared in the pilot episode, and uh, we will go by the, well, them one by one. So, the first one we have is Fido. <laughs> of course, in the pilot episode, you know, two boys, they break into the Crypt Keeper's home after, uh, after he was supposed to go on vacation, thinking, hey, it's a rich man, you know, let's break in, steal some things, get ourselves a nice little uh, motorbike. Uh, they run into their pet dog, guard dog, which of course is the werewolf. And I, I just love werewolf movies or shows, basically anything related to, to werewolves. Uh, if you ever watch it, uh, The Order on Netflix, one of my favorite series, and it was a shame to cancel that show after two years. I mean, that was just a waste. I mean, a fantastic series. But... We have the werewolf coming in as the first figure. Now, all the car backings are going to be identical. There's going to be no separation. Of course, they do give you the little bio cards, which is awesome. And so I don't have any of these figures loose. I was considering getting both carded and loose figures, 
for for display or for you know doing these videos but i decided just to get the car backing i mean i, I think getting them loose figures would probably be you know overkill so i guess these all have these little mechanisms i don't think you could see it in the back here but uh basically you push on these little mechanisms and you know the werewolf he kind of moves his head up and down which is pretty cool so werewolf number one then we followed up with the vampire, a.k.a. Dracula. Is that supposed to be Dracula? I don't know. I don't think legally they could say Dracula. Again, um, that is a specific horror character that, you know, copyright and whatnot. So it's just simply the vampire. Uh, this card backing isn't quite as crisp as some of my others, but I mean, just being able to have this figure to, to show you guys and to be able to display it. So I've kind of navigated away from wrestling for the most part. I mean, I'm still acquiring figures here and there. You know, uh, that hasn't really stopped per se. I'm just not going full force as I had been. So now I'm kind of focusing on uh, a horror collection. So I've ordered, you know, several uh, new shelving. And I'm going to have some selves installed into the basement here. And I'm going to create a whole nice little horror section um, just opposite, you know, my wrestling figures. So again, vampire. Again, with this mechanism, I think his hands and and cape moves when you when you push up and down on it. There should be a, we can't see it in here because the cape is blocking it. But vampire, second figure. Now this one, they actually came out with two of these figures. Uh, this is one of two, and this is kind of like your Hollywood Crypt Keeper. You know, in tuxedo. I want to say uh, Demon Knights, which is one of the uh, first uh, William Sadler movies that I've ever seen. Of course, uh, later on in life, I became familiar with William Sadler. Well, I, I already knew about him. Uh, William Sadler, of course, he would later guest star and uh, or star in Roswell. But uh, he starred in an episode of uh, Tales from the Crypt. He was uh, he was one of the prison guards who basically flipped the switch uh, for those on death row. And uh, took a liking to it way too much. And ended up basically murdering innocent people before he uh, himself got the chair. And of course in uh, Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knights. You know, he was one of those, uh, I guess, demon hunters. Kind of protecting the little Jesus Christ emblem that sported his blood. So, this Crypt Keeper, this figure, uh, he kind of reminds me of... That character from Demon Knights, where he just kind of jumps out of the car and he's wearing his little Hollywood jumpsuit. Uh, so this is Crypt Keeper in Tuxedo. And I haven't been doing it, but I probably should be reading the little bio cards. I don't know. I don't know if that's necessary, but you, know, you guys let me know if that's something you'd like me to go back and do later on. Coming at number four is The Mummy. And again, with these figures, I'm just basically keeping them in order of appearance on the card. You know, I'm not going by most favorites, least favorite, anything crazy like that. Uh, so Mummy is the fourth of eight figures. And with this figure, you know, you push down the back, his arms raise up, you know. Not, not anything major. Actually, kind of based on the uh, facial appearance of this figure, I actually think uh, this one is one of my favorites. Obviously, I still gravitate towards the werewolves, so they're still my, you know, the werewolf is still going to be my favorite regardless, but that is an awesome design, and, you know, they're Ace Novelty's own version of, you know, these iconic characters, so, you know, clearly you couldn't make them, you know, exactly like, you know, Hollywood version, but... I think they did a really amazing job, and if these are the only figures that they ever created, I think they have a pretty good, uh, you know, set of collections right here. Now with these figures, you buy these on card. Again, uh, if you're lucky, you might be able to get them for around twenty dollars. You know, most of these I think I bought, I paid somewhere around twenty-five to forty dollars for them. You know, if you want to get them uncarded, you probably get like three of these figures for like, you know, 20 bucks, 23, $25, something, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, me, I don't know. Uh, figures like the LJNs, Hasbro's, I started buying those, you know, uncarded originally. So as I kept going, you know, I 
decided to just keep going with the uncarded figures. But nowadays, every time I try to buy a new collection of something, I, I try my best to see if I can get it in its original packaging. To me, I, I just like the box sets, and I just think it's you know better to have originality as, as close as possible. Um, looking at this tag, 477 at Kmart for this figure. Uh, this is actually one of my least favorite figures, uh, the gargoyle. So when I when I think of gargoyles, uh, it's not reminiscent of uh, Tales from the Crypt. You know, this one actually sat on top of the Crypt Keeper's home. But uh, when I look at this figure, all I could think of is, you know, Tales from the Dark Side, which, you know, Tales from the Dark Side, Tales from the Crypt essentially have the same stories. Um, you know, both those both those series contained uh, a psychopath who escaped from a mental institution, dressed up as Santa Claus, and, and came to a, attack a family uh, right after the mom had murdered her husband. So uh, those two storylines uh, are almost identical in either series. And when I think of the Gargoyle, I think of one of the Tales from the Dark Side movies where, uh, where a drunk comes outside of a bar and says one of his friends get butchered by a demon demon gargoyle, whatever it was, he ends up uh, meeting a woman, uh, you know, they fall in love, have kids, one day he decides to tell her about his experience, he promised the demon he would never say, mention uh, that night, and he did, um, later on, of course, the wife transforms into the demon, and then you see his kids, small kids come out, and it's just so sad, it's one of the scariest, and one of the most well-written horrors I've, I've seen, um, again, I, I was smoky when I saw that, and, you know, I absolutely love that movie, and even today's standards, those are one of those movies that, that definitely hold up over time. So, Gargoyle, with this figure, again, you just push down the little butt on the, on his back here, his, his wings go up and down, you know, nothing major, not, nothing too flashy with these, with these, uh, figures. So, Gargoyle is the fifth figure. At number six is the second of two Crypt Keeper figures. Now, when you watch the actual Tales from the Crypt fig, uh, series, either the original or the Tales from the Crypt Keeper animated series, you know, this little Crypt robe that he wears, that's probably the most common when you when you think of the Crypt Keeper. So, with this one, uh, when you push down on the little button on the back, his hands raise up and down. Uh, nothing, you know, too crazy there. I don't know if I want to spend too much time looking this one over, but I think uh, among all the figures, obviously the werewolf is probably my favorite. The mummy is second. I think this would come close third, uh, kind of hand in hand with the with the mummy figure. Crypt Keeper number two, and this is simply called the robed one, or most commonly referred to as the robed Crypt Keeper. Uh, Crypt Keeper. Next we have is the Frankenstein monster. So with this one, uh, this one's kind of odd because you can actually tear apart uh, Frankenstein's body and kind of like rearrange his limbs, which is super awesome. You know, you could tear off his leg, his right leg, and you know attach it to his left arm or, or what have you. <laughs> so it's really creepy. And, and actually, you can actually see here in the bottom pictures where they do show you that the uh, the limbs are interchangeable. And not the Frankenstein monster that you're very accustomed to, but I mean, that is a really cool face, I think. Tales from the Crypt Keeper. You know, a lot of these tags from uh, Toy Works, KB Toys, what have you, they always have like these three for five dollars. That just makes me. Whenever I see these old stickers, they make me so mad because you, you just think about what you could have paid for these figures, you know, once upon a time, and knowing what you pay for them today. So, three for five dollars, that's a dollar, let's, let's round it up, let's call it a dollar and seventy cents or so, a dollar and sixty-five cents per box, and, you know, I probably paid twenty, thirty dollars for this, it just, oh man, markups today just kill, are just absolute killer. I wish I had these as a kid, but if I ever did, I probably would have torn them out of the package and displayed them. As a kid, I never really played with anything. Uh, yeah, I had my wrestling toys, uh, my Hasbros and Galoobs that I played with. Um, as I mentioned before, we used whatever had arms and legs as wrestlers. 
I don't care if it was Bigfoot, if it was the Incredible Hulk, if it was Thundercats, they were all wrestlers in, you know, in our, I don't know, our wrestling matches. Um, the actual, you know, as a kid, eight years old, nine, ten, you know, and so on, the only collection I really could say that was extensive was the Power Ranger collection. And again, whenever I got the packages, I always tore them out of package, displayed them. I never even played with them, so uh, I don't know if I would have actually had these card backings. But it would have been nice to have these, you know, today without the markup. So the final figure is the zombie. And with this one, uh, one of his arms and legs do fall off. So you, you can't actually sit there and physically pull them off if you need to. Uh, in the pilot episode of Tales from the Crypt Keeper, uh, the two young boys they break into the house as I mentioned. The mansion, uh, they end up in a little secret room, uh, searching for buried treasure, and some zombie characters come out of the dust or come out of the sand and, and attack before the boys are able to escape. And again, he this zombie actually looks more like an alien than than a zombie, but. I think the Frankenstein monster actually makes for a better zombie or better looking zombie than the zombie itself. But in a nutshell, these are the Tales from the Crypt Keeper set from Ace Novelty. Again, you know, mid 90s figures. Um, I'm trying to see if there's a date on here, which they don't. If I had to guess, I'd say somewhere around 94, 95 is when these figures probably came out. That is Tales from the Crypt Keeper, and again, a very easy, uh, simple, simple uh, video, and I'm actually just short of 17 minutes right now. So, uh, before we do go, um, I'll, I'll probably want to make two or three videos today, so I'll probably post this video today. Uh, today is Sunday, May 1st. So I'll post this video today, and then I'll come back. I'll, I'll make uh, two more videos uh, right now. So one of them is going to be a request. Someone wanted me to come go back and do the Galoob uh, UK exclusives. I have almost all of them now. I think I'm missing like two figures uh, in total from that whole, whole collection. Now I'm, I'm kind of hesitant because the Galoob videos did not do, didn't really get many views whatsoever. The second video, a lot better than the first. Maybe it's because I was breaking it down by my favorite figures and not necessarily breaking it down by series, so maybe if I redid it, maybe it would, it would gain a little bit better traction than uh, previous videos. So uh, that's a video that's been requested to me. I'll probably do that, maybe the third video I make. Um, the next video will basically be answering some questions. So uh, there are quite a you know, few questions that are asked of me, you know, mostly centered around my videos about Ram Treasures or, or around my, uh, my work video you know, talk about the companies, so, uh, next one is going to basically be a Q&A for the most part, I don't really perceive it being very long, uh, probably more than 5 minutes, it's not going to be, I think it's going to be more than 10, I, I would probably estimate 15-20 minutes, something similar to this video, and uh, then I'll jump into the Gloob UK exclusives uh, per the request. Alright guys, uh, again, uh, this you know, again, fun, you know, very small video, very fun. I really enjoyed it. And I've been looking forward to doing this one for a long time. I, I really you know, appreciate your guys' support. And I will talk to you all in the comments. Goodbye for now.